right, so this is the course. Um, so what are we going to do in this course? Well, you can certainly do my tasks manually, but you're probably not going to get a lot of cooperation from your users. Business rules, though, can automate this flow process, and by using what I like to call loops, uh, you can keep the tasks and the event snap in current. I'm a big believer that the event snap in tells you what's gone on in this case. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, that's what the case summary is about. Ah, I know what the charge is. It tells me that in the case title. I want to know if this thing's been to court, how many times it's been to court, why it was continued. And that's information that where I use the system. That was all on the event snap in. And you want to record specific events. Certainly if you're going through processes to do things and you're at some point trying to evaluate staff efficiency or whatever. Uh, okay, how many uh, new cases did Joe build versus you know, somebody else? Well, if you're keeping track of all this in my tasks, you can run a report on that and get the information fairly quickly. Um, so, based upon the resounding number of hands that went up as to where my tasks are, I think we might have some interest in where is my task, and we'll show you where that is, um, and where are tasks in a case, involving people on tasks, how to use business rule triggers to, to make this thing flow, rock and roll. You don't even have to, if you're doing the work, you don't even have to visit the event snap in. It's just all done for you. Um, and then, you know, show you the task, the flow, and actually uh, show you uh, how the loops work. I'm not going to build them because you know, all that saving and stuff, nobody gets any fun out of that. But I can show you the business rule as it exists. All right, so assumptions. Basic knowledge of business rules. You know, you've been there. You might even have built one. You have a rough idea how they work. Uh, in case something goes wrong, maybe you can go in and, and fix it. Uh, basic knowledge of just work tasks. And I think we may have some problems there, but it's not a deep, deep concept. Basically, just work tasks allows you to uh, address you know, uh, decision points or action points in your case flow process and create tasks associated with those. So new case, that, and that's one, one of the ones we're going to use, new case. Well, certainly if, if you're in JustWare, you're going to have a new case. And so when, you, when your data entry person gets done building that case, then something's got to happen because that, that person is not going over to court and prosecuting it. I virtually guarantee you that. So somehow there's some communication, some steps that have to be done. And we've got a little scenario here that we can look at that uh, I think will get the point across. So no special skills needed. Uh, any, re any repetitive process, uh, you know, criminal, her criminal history worksheet processing, uh, you know, doing subpoenas, uh, restitution issues. I mean, let's just take restitution, for example. Uh, certainly, if, if your organization is interested in recovering restitution for victims, uh, if you've got a victim, you may have restitution. So don't you have to send them out a letter or something and, and get some feedback on whether or not they've suffered any loss, and then they respond back, and, well, no, okay, well, that's the end of that, but yes, okay, so now we need to you know, get the amount of that restitution, get it built into the system, alert the prosecutor to the fact. This is all just case flow process. Okay, where is my task? And those of you in the first few rows probably say, well, I can read that. But I would, I would challenge some of you back there to be able to read it. So what we're going to do, uh, we've got a case off in the Raymond docket here. I'm just going to pull up uh, Mr. Russell. Uh, tasks are a sub uh, tab, uh, at least in the tabbed view. So this is where task is found at the case level. There is also uh, my tasks. And my tasks are found under my justware. And they're right here. And so I think I have uh, myself logged in as Buzz Flattop. I do. And uh, Buzz doesn't have any tasks today, OK? Uh, but if I did, this is where I could come and I could see them. Uh, I've got this basically configured to show them. Um, but that's where they're at. So you might say, well, OK, uh, it's not on my system. Uh, somewhere here I've got my screen isn't big enough to show everything. OK. So here we've got um, security permissions. And this is how you can show my tasks uh, on your system. You have to go into your particular security profile. I'm a Oklahoma Super up here, OK Super, whatever that is. Uh, I've filtered on a snap-in type of start. And there are several options in start. So I've sorted again on my tasks. 
And this is a way I would recommend that you, whenever you turn anything or anything off, go through this process so that you find everything. Uh, and we've just decided for demonstration purposes, we're going to turn on everything. Uh, you might in your office, uh, for instance, not be using subtasks. I'm not demonstrating subtasks today, but they're going to be displayed. So that's how you get, quote, the uh, my tasks in view. As far as getting the um, individual tasks in view on your um, view of the world, the tab details, or whatever it is you're using back here on the Alan Russell case, go through the same process except you just go into the um, security profile for that particular view. So uh, we've already shown you this, where tasks, they're under events, but remember I'm doing this uh, because you're doing this at home at your desk. And here is the, uh, the uh, in this particular, I've got it uh, sorted on case, tab, so this is the other half. I showed you how to get it on your uh, actual uh, desktop uh, in, under My Just, where this is setting it up in the individual case. Um, you can do things such as establish priorities. You can establish category of tasks and then put the task in itself. So and we have an extra blank column here. I don't really use the title, so I, I missed that when I took this snapshot. But you know, here's charge preparation, criminal history worksheet, the two things we're going to be talking about here in just a bit. Uh, if you want to prioritize those, you can. And starting a task is just like entering an event. It is a type of event. So you have to go in and hit the plus button or control I and get the row in there and decide what the task is and all these drop downs. And oh golly, you know, just describing it makes me tired. That's why I like business rules. I like things that, that work for me. I don't like working for the computer. So two options. Uh, we're going to use column A. Uh, column B requires a little help from your IT person, but let's walk through this, okay? Uh, tasks or events, okay? And you can use, in your tools section, default event involved people. And it's by role. Why is it by role? Why is it not by name? Anybody have any idea? Names change. Maybe in the case of the life of this core, uh, case, the person that was doing this particular task is now inactive on the case because we've got somebody else assigned to do it. So we do it by role so that there's always somebody on the other end. You know, it's one of those, hello, hello, you know, we haven't been disconnected because that person's no longer on the case. The second one is you can do a get data or a get data with children. And I know as soon as I start saying get data and get data with children, people's eyes start fluttering, heart rate goes up. I don't know how to do that. That's okay, we're not going to show you that today. It's relatively simple. Your IT department can help you with it. Associating a person with a task will put that task on their My Tasks view for processing. So this is very focused. If it's something that a data entry person does, fine. If it's somebody that a, something that a paralegal does, like you know, maybe researching the uh, state's uh, criminal history computer to see if there's any priors on this individual, pulling down the information, putting it into a, a document, putting it in the filing cabinet so when the prosecutor reviews the case, it's there. You know, it's that kind of stuff, uh, very, uh, very focused. And I don't see it, if it's some, some task that somebody else does, it's not on my task list, it's on theirs. And so when I open up my task, that's stuff I do. Or I might do in concert with somebody else, there might be two or three people doing this activity and we'll cover how you can handle that in just a second. I'll just go ahead and open it up. So what we're looking at uh, or looking for is the uh, tasks that you can set. So you come into Justware and you go to Code Tables. And since this is in the case world, we click on Cases and then we get down here to the bottom of the list and we get into Tasks. And Tasks uh, has multiple things that can be done with them. And I'll sort of turn around so that people in the back can hear me. If at any time you can't hear what I'm saying, shout out. Um, we're only going to be working with uh, charge preparation review and criminal history on the business rules that I'm going to show you today. But you, you know, you have to put a code in, you have to put a description in since they're tasks. It's the only option you get here is other. Uh, the uh, instance I have here actually uses the category. Do you have to use the category? No. Uh, but we do here. Uh, so you have to build these, determine what they are, what is, what is the work that's going to be done, what is the task, decide what those are, get them in, get them coded. Get data, uh, same person, the same task, runs on a business rule. I think I said all this, so rather than have you read something you already know, we'll move on. 
Uh, using the default event task involved person option adds the case involved person when the task is added. It only takes a second to get there. Tools, default event involved people. Whenever this event goes into the case, these people get put in the lower snap in with regard to being involved in it. So we had, uh, there's a whole long laundry list of uh, stuff here. So we'll scroll down and try and make this uh, meaningful here. New case. Ha! That's one we're going to be using. And uh, you know, here's the prosecuting uh, attorney's involvement in this particular item. So when that new case gets put in, the, uh, the prosecuting attorney should become an involved person in a particular event. Uh, you have to establish the relationship of the defendant involved role with the event in order for the task process to work. When new cases are added in our office, let's just say that a new case event is added to the event snap-in. That is the last thing that the data entry clerk does. They know that they've got the, uh, the, this, the case involved party snap-in filled out. They've, they've perhaps put in the charges or if your office uh, uh, has the uh, prosecutor decide what charges are going to be put in like we're going to do here then uh, it's time for the prosecutor to get with the program. So we need something to actually get the ball rolling, and I just choose the new case event. So by slapping that new case in here, we're going to start firing business rules, which are starting uh, to make uh, people go to work. So we need a criminal history worksheet prepared for the defendant and all listed witnesses or victims, because the prosecutor's got to know if the key witness he's going to put on the stand has some sort of crime of dishonesty. And so he wants to see if this person's, you know, been in jail for theft or some other crime of dishonesty. And then after that's done, the prosecutor needs to review the police report and decide on the possible charges or whether or not we're even going to do this at all. I mean, this may, may be one of those, you know, urinating, urinating in public things, you know, and you know, I don't want to put that on somebody's record if they had too much to drink, you know, and so clean history and they just dump it. Integrating the business rules. Triggering events. Um, we have... Uh, Couple and you know, please ignore all the subpoena worksheet. It, it's going to work the same way as the new case scenario. Uh, I thought maybe I would show two different ways to do this, and as I practiced it, it took way too long. So we'll we'll just focus on new case. So we have this new case event going in. Um, system administration. Oh, sorry. This is the back end where we're actually uh, you know uh, putting in these uh, case types so that uh, or tasks. Sorry, event types so that the tasks will be triggered. So here are the two tasks we talked about, charge preparation review and criminal history worksheet, both each having their own code so that we can assign them in my task to the rule. Trigger, so event entry will trigger the task, task status will trigger the subsequent task or provide feedback of the task completion to the event snap in. This is the automation aspect of this thing. In, uh, anytime you're dealing with status in Justware, and status is like, you know, the giant sword. I love swinging status around because you can integrate that with business rules and get all kinds of really sweet things done. Uh, if you've got some sort of an event and there's a, there's a, a roll-up preparation to it, you can put it in an appending status and when stage one is done, you flip it over to that stage and it generates stuff and makes entries or generates a document or sends a mail or whatever it needs to do. You get feedback on that, then you roll it over to the next status and you can just see this thing mark, march forward for a particular event. In this particular case, we're going to use uh, these four statuses, and we're going to use, uh, actually, we're not going to use served, disregard. We're going to use the top three statuses. So we're going to say it's either uh, pending, in work, or it's completed. And the reason why we're using these statuses is we want to show when you go into my task, we want to be able to see, OK, here's this long list of things to do, uh, what's in work and what isn't, OK? So everything should be going in as pending. And I build it this way because there might be two of us on this task list. And we're alternating, you know, working on the cases. And if I just open this up and I see pending, well, maybe I start to work on that task and somebody else is already working on it. And I open the case up and I go, oh, what's going on here? And I keep hitting refresh and things are happening. And pretty quick it dawns on me that somebody else in the office is actively working this. So the first step in my little scenario is we take the pending and throw it over to end work. So when I go back to my refresh my tasks, anything that's in work, I know somebody else has already snatched onto that, and I just want to get the pending one. And so I pick a pending one. 
So the, the flow here in the status is it's pending, then it goes in work, and when you know, the work has been completed, it goes to complete. When we hit complete, it disappears off of my task, and it's gone, and I can then move on to it. So theoretically, uh, this new case thing, people are entering all these <laughs> cases, you know, about uh, everybody comes to work about 8 o'clock, well, boom, boom, all these tasks start appearing about 8.30, and there's work for me to do in my criminal history research, and as I go through that, my list starts getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And when, I'm, when I don't have any more of those, I know, well, heck, we've, we've done all the cases that we got overnight. So this is my looping thing, and I'm going to show you this stuff, but I want to talk about it in advance so you know what you're seeing when you actually see it. I like a business rule that generates the task, and then I like a business rule that looks at the task to see if it's complete and then tells the event snap in, good to go. So there's actually two different rules going here. All right, so here's the business rule. It's an after update business rule. Case tasks by event. So what that's supposed to say to you is, okay, a task gets created when an event gets entered. Uh, I'm a big believer in if else's. Uh, there are other types of activities, but I like choices. You know, I like to be able to say, okay, we can do multiple things when something happens. And I've gone through and actually relabeled this thing, and you'll have pictures of this. We'll, we'll speed through them fairly quickly uh, when we uh, get back to the slides. But this only works in misdemeanors and DV misdemeanor cases. If you're doing felonies, I got another rule for that, okay? So this only looks at uh, misdemeanors and DV. So when I click on this, uh, down in the lower half down here, there should be some um, codes that I am actually focusing on. So you can see this is original information, and I'm looking for either DISCT, which is a misdemeanor, or I'm looking for MDV, which is a misdemeanor case, uh, DV misdemeanor case type. If I'm getting either one of those, when I insert a case event, this business rule fires through and says, okay, can I help? And it, uh, it may not be helping. I might be entering some sort of an event that doesn't generate a task. So it'll run in the background, and uh, people are sometimes concerned about, well, you know, I don't want to run too many business rules in the background and slow down my instance. Uh, you know, my experience, uh, you don't really notice the slowdown if it's even there. And if it takes a, you know, a millisecond for it to do this, but I'd have to manually do this, and it would take me a minute and a half to get it done, I'll give up the millisecond. Uh, so it comes on down. We met this criteria, comes over here and you can see that there's two different branches. I told you I had built subpoenas, it looks just like the new case one, so we're not going to do that one. We're going to come over here and do the new case event. So looking down on the activity on this, if there is inserted data, in other words this is what's going into the event row, new stuff, under case events, and it's the event type called end case, what that means on the user side is new case just got typed into the event snap in. This rule says, yeehaw, this is mine. And so it creates a charge task. Flows down here, and then drops out, all is forgiven. If it doesn't say end case, and it doesn't say subpoenas, it comes over here and flows out this way. Nothing happened. But we got lucky, and we are going to actually do a result event type called criminal history worksheet. And it's the category pretrial tasks. Once again, totally optional. Don't have to use it, but you got to have the resulting event type. And we want to go that in, uh, want that entered with this pending status that I was talking about earlier. We want this to go on a big list and we don't want it to get lost or, you know, confused with the work that's been done or work that's in, quote, in work. So that's all there is to it. You put in a new case and boom, it goes into the test. And because this uh, criminal history worksheet has a default name associated with it. It shows up on that person's my tasks. All right, so let's take a quick look at the, quote, other rule. So now we have task status controlling new events. And slide this over here, make sure we've got everybody home. Good. Criminal history worksheet is sort of what we're focusing on. So <clears throat> once again, uh, let's take a look at criminal history worksheet. Now understand we're in tasks. So we're looking at updated data over in my tasks, which is the, the basically the start button uh, side of the, the house. And we're looking for the event type of criminal history worksheet. So uh, has data been updated on that row? Because that row exists, 
and somebody has uh, you know, either come through and done something to the row or has done something to the status on that row. And I, if you were in my class this morning, which didn't go so well because of computer problems, I made a big deal out of this, and I want to go back and make a big deal out of it again. Because I said that status is like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty broad sword, and you can do all kinds of really cool work with statuses, but you absolutely must, ought to, got to have it every time this uh, no, non-status update check. Uh, if you have an event item and you type a note in that event item and hit save, it's going to go, hey, there's been an update to this particular event item and I'm going to fire as a business rule and oh look, the status is this and so he wants me to generate this next row. When we didn't change the status at all, the status has been the status was before what it is now. And that's what this actually checks. It comes down and it says, okay, we're going to look at this updated data and these little squiggly lines and these bracketed lines with the equal symbol, that's code inside the system which says, okay, is the status going to be, after we save this puppy, you remember it's a before update, is it going to be what it was before we saved it? And if the answer is yes, then we don't do anything because they're not playing with the status column, they're playing with something else. And we don't want to generate a row we don't need. If they are different, then it jumps over to the next branch and we start getting the desired outcomes out of the rule. So maybe I oversimplified that or maybe I foot stomped it too hard, but I will tell you if, if you use status to generate events or documents or anything like that and you don't have this you know, uh, basically safety interlock in here, you'll start getting uh, all kinds of undesired results. And if you forget that, you'll, as soon as you get that, that row you didn't want, you'll remember it. It'll come to you in a flash. It'll let you know, though, what, where your mistake is at. Uh, well, you'll, you'll know you've got a mistake if you don't have it in the rule because it'll give you the activity that you didn't want. Yeah. Okay. And if it does what you want it to do, you'll be good to go. Okay, so let's jump over to the action rule. Um, <clears throat> we have a, so now the status has changed and we're looking for a completed status. If there's been a completed status entered, then we drop down through the business rule and we do two engine, engine event results. One of them is, oops, uh, we put in a charge preparation review task for the prosecutor. Now we get the prosecutor involved. We've done the criminal history, it's in there. We say, okay, prosecutor, go take a look at this and read the police report and decide what you're going to do with this case. So me as the paralegal or whatever I am that, that I build this uh, criminal history, my work is done and now it's time for the prosecutor to do his job. It once again, goes into the pending. And it also goes in and puts in the events snap in that the criminal history worksheet has been completed. So six months from now, we can click on the event snap in and say, yes, this thing has a criminal history worksheet. I don't even have to go over and look in the filing cabinet because of our case, pro case flow processes. I know it's over there. So that's the two simple things that this second rule does. So here we are back up on case tasks by event, which was the first business rule. We check to see if it's the kind of case that we want this thing to be interacting with. Uh, we come over and uh, we look for Oh, sorry, this is the one that's actually generating the event, so there's no status check here. This one does not operate off of status, it just operates off of the event being inserted. So it looks down here, is this end case been inserted? Yes, it has, and it makes the task, which hopefully is the next slide. New case is in here, that fires it, boom. Criminal history worksheet pending for, and this is at the case level, so it's the task placeholder. I use the name record of task placeholder just as a generic name. We have to have somebody involved with this. And if you are going to, uh, if you just want to have one default party, if I went over here to the uh, case involved parties, you would see that there's a paralegal on this case. And you have to have a paralegal on every case if this is going to work. And you want that paralegal to not be just one of six and make them responsible for divvying out these events, you want to put in a generic one in there so that this uh, task goes on to this task placeholders task page that everybody has access to. And then you can just log on over there and do the work. So it's, it's a lean and mean way of getting the job done. So 
here's task placeholder, and here's the criminal history worksheet. So we're actually getting ahead of the computer here with our slides. But after this fires off, this event is generated, and this involved person has been associated with that task. And we're entered in a pending status. So we'll go one more inward. So let's see what it looks like on the machine. So let's go back over and find Mr. Russell. So <clears throat> here he is, and you know, I've got this Rima docket on there. Uh, this would probably come before uh, he's actually been in court, so that's a little uh, fakey. Uh, probably should have taken that off. So there's a new case event. I basically uh, save it, and the business rules are firing in the background. How do we know the business rules are firing in the background? We come down and take a look at the little chevron, and we've got actually a couple, three business rules firing. We've got uh, case task by event, which is what we're interested in at this point. Uh, insert restitution event involved people is firing for a restitution oriented type of case, and then a new case notice for other people are also firing. So one of the three business rules. The result of this, though, should be that I have a task over here. <coughs> and lo and behold, I do, okay? Uh, it didn't give me a task involved person, which uh, is ugly. Uh, hopefully that's not a problem, but let's go see. Um, my tasks, I don't think I have that open up here. So remember I told you my task was under my justware? My task right here. And I probably got this open more than once because I can't see everything that's going on. I don't have any tasks. Well, it's not, quote, my job. It's the task placeholder's job. So it's going out and saying, oh, you stinker. You stinker. All right, well, we got a link broken here someplace. Let me jump back over and actually get task placeholder put on this case. Should do that by the business rules, so something's turned off somewhere. Uh, oh, she's not on, I know what's going on. She's not on the uh, case involved parties. Yep, she's not on as a case involved party. So this case was built before this rule was actually um, put in play. So let's go ahead and add her and see how the rule actually works. Uh, we're going to go back and just redo this real quick. Uh, task placeholder. Here she is. Okay. So we're going to save this. I hate it when things go south. All right. So we go back over to events. We're going to take um, this task out, let the rule recreate it. I'm going to go back over to events. And I'm going to take this out, he says. Hello. And we'll save. And we'll start over. Pre-flight your ordinance. And in this particular case, I thought I had, but... I was wrong. <coughs> New case, save. <coughs> Business rule fires in the background. I go over to tasks. Lo and behold, hello, go over to tasks. Criminal history worksheet, task placeholder is associated with it. Should be over here again under my tasks. Task placeholder will do an F5 since this was already open. And Lo and behold, she's got a task. So, criminal history worksheet. You know, I'm getting some extra fields here. Apologize about that. Drop those two things off so this is a little easier to see. So we've got the case in here. We've got the task that needs to be done. As I told you, it comes in as a pending task. Anybody that can open task placeholders uh, name in this agency can see this. So I might have two or three people that work on this particular type of task. They come in, they say, okay, I'm gonna take this one. They flip its status over to in work. Now if there's five or six on there, somebody else opens this up. They're not duplicating my efforts. I then go in, I'm not gonna go through the whole process, but I, I build the criminal history worksheet. I fill it all out. I put it in the filing cabinet. I'm happy with it. All is well. Now I say, okay, it's completed, and I save it. More than one people will likely have the ability to see this, and so we put it in work so that somebody else isn't working in a case that's already somebody else is fixing. I got you. Okay? So you're not updating it at the same time. So you say, oh, hey, I thought that was supposed to disappear. Well, it did. This is a new task, and this is apparently one of those shared tasks. Charge preparation and review is now in a pending status on this same case. Let's go over and see if Buzz has this on his. 
he's the prosecutor on this case, he should be on it as well. And lo and behold, he does. So it happens the same way. They put it in an in-work status. They do whatever they need to do. Once the work is done, they roll back in on it and show it completed. Now it drops off of everybody's tasks. And while all this has been going on, we've been keeping track of what's been going on in the case back in the events uh, tab. I'll have to refresh this, make sure we're on events, that would help. So, here they are. Uh, once again, ignore the arraignment. Let's take that off altogether so you can't see it. New case came in. We had the uh, criminal history worksheet completed and uh, the charging, charging is complete and we've decided that when that happens, we're going to put in a status of posted. In work, uh, remember we had uh, has occurred and has not occurred. In work is a has not occurred. That's why it stays on the event snap or the uh, my task uh, snap in because the status is set to hold it there until we actually get it over to completed when it is a has occurred and it drops off. All right, so here we are in my task. Task plus holder is doing her thing or his thing. They've completed uh, their work. They save. Boom. Now it's charge preparation and it's a shared event with the prosecutor. So it's not only on task placeholder, but it's on the prosecutor. And you can see there they both are. Okay. Second business rule, task status controls the events and is engaged by changes in my tasks. I already showed you that uh, second business rule. Here's another quick look at it. Criminal history worksheet. Looks at my tasks, comes in, looks for that particular event, checks the status to see whether or not that's what's being updated. And if it is, if it's not, it flows through. If it is, it jumps over and does the work of the second branch. Not spending a lot of time here because we've already seen this at least once. Okay. And so here's the result in our, without the arraignment docket in that I had on the case I was showing you, here's the results of the work. Now there's no more tasks, and we have the second event in. So you've seen it on the machine, you've seen it in the slide pack, you should be able to reproduce this at home for whatever you've got going. We're now over in charging complete, showing how that status, uh, or uh, rather event, got entered. Uh, I didn't actually go through that in the business rule, but I think once you've seen one branch, you've seen it all. So what did we learn today? Uh, how to use my tasks to parse out case workflow and use people's time efficiently. I mean, if you're doing something that somebody else can work on immediately, then they should know they can work on it right away. But if they're uh, currently tasked with something else that's determined to be a higher priority, then we bank those tasks in their my task, and when they have the opportunity, they go over and actually work on it. This doesn't generate uh, pop-ups, you can see. It doesn't generate emails. It doesn't generate telephone calls. It doesn't yell, generate the yelling between uh, cubes, any of that kind of stuff. Very quick, very quiet, and very efficient. So how do you, do you have a notification to the person? How do you task in it to read what you could do? No, everyone, and the question she says, well, how do people know that they've got this? You do have to open my tasks and keep looking at it periodically. If you've got work in there, well, you just work in there until it's done, unless you have some higher calling, and then you come back and keep working, and when the list is finally complete, you refresh, and if it stays empty, then you're done. And it totally regulates and manages your time efficiently, efficiently in the office. So we learned how to integrate it with the business rule, and we learned how to loop business rules, put two together, such that we can not only start it, but we can keep track of what's going on as we're going through the processes. Um, loop's just an example. If you have some other kind of flow, you can modify it. Once you, once you have the general concept, hey, uh, you, can, you can involve as many steps in this process as you, you think you need, okay? Uh, good luck in your automation endeavors. endeavors. Uh, this side plaque will be available on the Newton community. I'd like to thank everybody for their attention. And since uh, I'm a contract employee, I want them to know how hard I work for them. So go to the survey and say what you think. I was, was going to say, say nice things about me, but I'd, I'd like to know what you really thought of the course. I think this is great. I think everybody should be using it. And, uh, if you do too, then please say so. Thank you very much, and we'll see you around the campus.